magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun And welcome back to another half hour of the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show. Let's go straight into some music by Nancy Stewart of nancymusic.com. I'm a little skull up in a shell down in the sand. I live quite well, but if you come and knock in. I'll close up tight, you won't see me anymore Every tree has roots and trunk and leaves and flowers too The flowers and leaves and trunk and roots all have a job to do It all begins with the flowers for they keep the seeds that Or fleas in your knees 
okay to wiggle and squirm. Kids like to wiggle and jump up and down. They're just like bugs that way. When they get to wiggle and jump up and down, they're having a real good day. If you have ants in your pants or fleas in your knees and you feel like a wiggle worm, come on along with me and you'll see at times it's okay to wiggle and squirm. It's a good thing to wiggle and squirm. Know what time it is? It's nature time. And today we are going to talk about the tarantula. Do you know what a tarantula is? It's a type of spider. It's a big fat fuzzy spider. And like all spiders, the tarantula has eight legs. The legs and body are covered with hairs. Some of the hairs on their abdomen, called urticating hairs, can be thrown at an enemy to cause irritation. They help the tarantula to ward off predators. Tarantulas mostly eat insects. The larger tarantulas will eat small animals, such as mice, birds, frogs, and lizards. They sneak up on prey and pounce on them, envenoming their prey, rather than catching it in a web like many spiders. Once the prey is caught, they secrete digestive enzymes into the prey that basically liquefies the body so the spider can eat it. Ugh. Some tarantulas live in the ground while others live in the trees. If they live in the ground, they make a burrow to live in, which they line with their silk or web. If they live in trees, they make a tube tent out of their silk to live in. Yes, they are all venomous. But how dangerous they are to humans varies from tarantula to tarantula. <laughs> well, I hope we all don't have to find that out the hard way. Some bites are similar to a wasp sting, while others have been known to make a human very sick. Many are harmless to humans and rarely bite. Phew! And they are becoming a popular pet. Ah! One of their predators is the Pepsis wasp, which has the nickname Tarantula Hawk. Females can lay up to 2,000 eggs. Ah! Females can live up to 30 years old. Tarantulas climb with the aid of retractable claws that are at the end of each leg. And they can regrow lost legs through multiple moltings. Oh my gosh. And I want to read you a little story about a tarantula. And this one's called The Tarantula in My Purse. And this is written by a nature writer called Jean Craighead George. Okay, here we go. Crickets for the tarantula was an item on my grocery list for almost seven years. I had found her crossing the highway in Oklahoma while I was doing the research for One Day in the Prairie, one of five tales about natural ecosystems. My wonderful friend, Elian Young, a photographer artist who photographs children and wildlife had come with me on the trip. We had camped for 10 days meeting bison, prairie dogs, rattlesnakes, and gorgeous huge furry tarantulas as big as a man's hand. 
Now we were driving to the airport to return home when Taran the tarantula walked out on the road into heavy traffic. Stop the car, Elian said. She'll never make the crossing. We've got to save her. I pulled off the road. Elian stopped the traffic while I scooped. <laughs> I scooped the spider up and put her in a plastic bag and then placed her in my purse. Hmm. <laughs> I handled my purse very carefully all the way home. Tarantulas are like Humpty Dumpty. When they fall, they smash. The thin, shell-like carapace that protects the large, watery abdomen cannot be put back together again. I was relieved when I got her home and into a terrarium. She came to be tolerant of us, if not friendly and would climb onto our hands and, on cold days, sit in the warmth of a palm. It is a myth that the bite of a tarantula is fatal, although some people react to a tarantula's bite more than others. Taran has never bitten anyone, I heard Luke explain to a friend, who had asked the inevitable question, So we don't know if we'll die. <laughs> About twice a year, Taryn molted her exoskeleton when she grew too big for her old one. We knew it was about to happen when she stopped eating for two or three days. Next, the luster would leave her eyes as the old chitin separated from the new and the metamorphosis began. We would try to be on hand for this remarkable performance, but only once did we get there on time? The back split and slowly, slowly, as if stepping out of a glass form, she would squeeze her eight feet, every hair, every antenna, every mouth part, scale and joint. Then she would thrash violently as she extricated herself. Presently, she was standing outside her old skin. On the sand at the bottom of the terrarium, there would be two identical images. One was Taran, and one was her old self. The old selves could be picked up and handled, and by the time Luke went off to college, he had several old selves in his room to startle his classmates. Inspired by Taran, Craig created his most famous sign one September day. He nailed it to the tree at the end of the walk. Twig was at Bennington College. He was enrolled at Utah State University. And Luke was about to go to Reed College. I would be home alone. Craig thought I might need protection. Beware of the tarantula, it read. All right. Let's play some music.
edge of the web, but don't get stuck. Walk around the edge of the web, but don't get stuck. Don't go into the middle, my friend. You'll get stuck. It will be the end. You can walk around the edge of the web, but don't get stuck. Boom, boom, boom. Walk around the edge of the web, but don't get stuck. Walk around the edge of the web, but don't get stuck. Don't go into the middle, my friend. You'll get stuck. It will be the end. You can walk. have time to squeeze in a short story it's called Bruce and the spider and it has a little lesson about what we can learn <laughs> from the spider Bruce and the spider Robert Bruce King of Scotland was hiding in a hut in the forest his enemies were seeking him far and wide six times he had met them in battle and six times he had failed Hope and courage were gone. Bruce had given up all as lost. He was about to run away from Scotland and to leave the country in the hands of his enemies. Full of sorrow, he lay stretched on a pile of straw in the poor woodchopper's hut. While he lay thinking, he noticed a spider spinning her web. The spider was trying to spin a thread from one beam of the cottage to another. It was a long way between the beams, and Bruce saw how hard a thing it was for her to do. She can never do it, thought the king. The little spider tried it once and failed. She tried it twice and failed. The king counted each time. At length she had tried it six times and had failed each time. She is like me, thought the king. I have tried six battles and failed. She has tried six times to reach the beam and failed. Then, starting up from the straw, he cried, I will hang my fate upon that little spider. If she swings the seventh time and fails, then I will give up all for lost. If she swings the seventh time and wins, I will call my men together once more for a battle with the enemy. The spider tried the seventh time, letting herself down upon her slender thread. She swung out bravely. Look, look, shouted the king, she has reached it. The thread hangs between the two beams. If the spider can do it, I can do it. Bruce got up from the straw with new strength and sent his men from village to village, calling the people to arms. The brave soldiers answered his call and came trooping in. At length his army was ready to fight, and when the king led them in a great battle against the enemy, this time, like the spider, Bruce won. We're coming up to the end of another half hour of the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show for Young Children. We're going to play a group activity. A real cool one. This one is called What Did I Hear? Now it is a bit like the other listening activities that we've done. But this one, we want to find out how we feel when we hear the sound. We can also guess the sound, but we're going to figure out how it makes us feel. Okay, so close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes and let's play the first sound. Okay, you ready? What was that?
Was that an alien? Was that something from a secret space program? <laughs> How did it make you feel? Well, it sounded spooky to me. It made me feel... A little bit confused. How did it make you feel? Okay. Let's try... The next one. Here we go. Close your eyes. You know what that is? I bet you do. How does it make you feel? Well, it makes me feel relaxed. You know, it actually makes me feel a little bit cool. Because it's quite warm here in New Zealand today. It makes me feel like going for a swim at the beach how does it make you feel okay right you ready for the next one here we go Do you know what this sound is? That's right. This is the sound of wind chimes. How does this sound make you feel? Well, it makes me feel peaceful okay we got time for one more okay okay you ready for this one close your eyes That made me feel stressed out. <laughs> How did it make you feel? We want to live in a world where we don't have to ever hear that sound. And that's what The Secret Kindergarten is all about. Thanks for listening. We'll see you at the next one. 